Hello everyone, my name is Tim Hansen, and today I'm going to show you how to set up access rules on a Sonic Wall Gen 7 Sonic OS 7 firewall. If you're used to Gen 6.5 or Gen 6 appliances, or have used either in the past, you're probably already familiar with the process of setting up an access rule. And really, for the most part, access rules on Sonic OS 7 are pretty much the same as they are on Gen 6.5 or Gen 6. Functionality-wise, they really haven't changed much. So they'll obviously look a little bit different, given that the Gen 7 appliances have a new firmware. But the logic within the rules, as well as the options and features within them, are essentially the same. So the access rules can be found here under the policy menu option. You'll see, of course, a bunch of default rules as well as your custom rules. And if you want to change it so you only see the manually created rules, you can grab this, pull down here, and select custom. It just makes it simpler to look at when managing all your access rules. Okay. So to create a rule, we go down over here and just click add. I'll name it something appropriate. And so access rules can set up to either allow, deny, or discard traffic. Depends on really what you're creating the rule for. Deny will have the firewall reject the traffic, whereas the firewall will drop traffic silently if you're, or if the traffic hits a discard rule. This is going to default to IPv4, which is OK. And then we decide the priority of the rule. So essentially where we want it in relation to the other access rules. And I'll just stick it here at the top. If we wanted the access rule to only be applied at certain hours of the day or days of the week, we can set the schedule. If you're not finding the specific schedule you want in the list of default schedules, you can create a customized schedule here under Object and Schedules. OK, and then moving back over to my access rule. What we'll do first is we'll set up everything that pertains to what traffic the access rule is applying to. So you would pick where the traffic is originating from and where it's destined for. A common example of this would be something simple like a LAN to WAN rule to give internet access to internal clients or internal devices. So for traffic from the LAN zone, specific to the X0 subnet for all ports and services going anywhere on the WAN zone or to the WAN zone. Okay, and if we're using authentication on the firewall, we would use this option here to match the rule to specific groups of users or individual users. And then here, if we want to change the default TCP and UDP timeouts, we can do that as well. Okay. So moving over, or assuming you've got your source and destinations all set up here, we'll move over to the Security Profiles tab. Okay, so you can see we have a number of options here. And first is the DPI option. So this gives us the ability to decide which access rules we want security services like intrusion prevention, antivirus, and anti-spyware applied to. I should note that in order to use any of these security services, you would have had to first enable the feature globally here under security services. Okay. So best practices as it relates to DPI, typically you would want to apply the DPI engine to all traffic unless there's a specific need to exclude specific traffic from these engines. And a good example might be something like SIP traffic, which doesn't do well when it experiences latency. So if you have an access rule and it's specific to SIP traffic or maybe the UDB traffic that typically carries audio, you would simply leave this option disabled to ensure there's no latency from passing that traffic through the IPS or the antivirus engine. OK. And then here is also where we would enable or keep disabled client or server DPI SSL decryption on a per access rule basis. Okay. And then similarly, we can enable botnet slash command and control protection as required. 
Okay, and also here is where we can define our GOIP or country blocking settings. If you want the rule to apply differently or to apply different GO GOIP settings than are applied globally to all traffic. So let's just say I don't want any of my internal users being able to access any Russian or China based IP addresses. I would just simply grab both those countries and move them over to the block site okay and then traffic shaping is where we would configure quality of service and bandwidth management if you need it for the rule I should mention that for things like quality of service or bandwidth management or setting up intrusion prevention or any other any other of the security services check the list of videos on the how to section I am planning on doing separate videos on most of these items so likely by the time you're watching this those videos should already exist on SonicWall U okay the logging tab will let you select whether you're going to log traffic going through this rule as well as whether to enable flow reporting for this rule. Personally, I enable it for both. And then the optional settings tab has some additional options related to SIP, TCP options, and a few others. Okay, and back over on the main access rules page, I did mention the ability here to filter rules based on whether they're custom created rules or default rules we can also do the same for IPv4 versus IPv6 this option here is pretty neat it's uh, the one I use the most so this gives us the ability to choose access rules going from one zone to the other big help if you have a large number of rules and then we have the active inactive used and unused pages or options which let us filter based on whether the access rule has a hit count for sessions running through it all right best practices for access rules I'll give you a couple and they're just really high level number one access rules should be always as strict or as granular as possible in other words don't create a land to WAN rule leave the network and services option to any and hit save get as like I said as granular as possible define specific subnets but define specific services number two conduct audits on your access rules and get rid of any rules you aren't using so how do you know whether a rule is in use or not or whether you don't need a rule come over here select the un unused rules from the drop down select the date to I don't know seven days maybe and all the rules that are left standing having a zero hit count there's a reasonable chance you don't need them and are able to delete them or remove them and then number three for all the remaining rules you'll want to utilize DPI GOIP, botnet filtering, etc. You should only ever have a rule or rules without these security services when there's a specific need to do so or to disable it, typically when there's a conflict of some sort. Alrighty. So, from a 10,000 foot view, that's pretty much it for access rules. Not all inclusive by any means, but it should be sufficient for you to get started on the new Sonic OS 7 firmware. Alright, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.